Hello! I'm going to do a bit of harvesting today, I think. Harvest some crops. Let's check what we can uh, we can take. Now, as you probably know, we've got plenty of stuff growing on. Uh, these peas were put in about six or seven weeks ago, so they've got a few weeks yet to go. Um, so we're going to be looking at sort of October time, really, for picking the peas off from here. There's my little uh, herb garden. But um, I've planted peas in several locations. Planted them a little bit too late, probably about three weeks too late. For my liking. But flowers are coming on, so we should, give it, we should be getting peas. I mean, we've got the starts of pea pods coming on there. But we can't eat them as yet. We'll be cold, but we don't want to. So what we're going to be doing is taking what we have got ready and there's plenty of beetroot as you can see there those are parsnips grown in buckets um, but we're going to be taking the beans for the start we've got Uncle Joe's beans the wise old elf beans which are still producing they've still got plenty on them as you can see there so I'm going to get about uh, 50 or 60 of those I think these are the ones that we planted in later uh, about six weeks after and they've started to produce bean as well now so we're hoping that they'll be producing bean for the next sort of six weeks taking us into november and maybe beyond you never know it depends on the weather doesn't it um but we're certainly we're certainly going to be getting beans we're also going to be getting these um zucchinis um because we've still got some um courgettes that are coming on the rampant as usual these courgettes rampant and we've been checking off for probably about five or six each time I've been nipping down, which has been every sort of three days or so. And we've been checking five or six. And some of these we've left a little bit too long, but they're, they're all edible. So we're going to take some of those as well. So we've got beans. We've got courgettes. We've got the cluster planted beetroot, which is in there cluster planted beetroots so those beets are going to be coming out the spinach has come to the end of it there so that's going to be probably pulled out as well you can eat the leaves of, of course as well on the um, on the beetroot I'm going to be checking on these ones actually in the buckets and seeing whether the parsnips have um, have actually grown parsnip size parsnip shape because the last few have been sort of like monstrous alien creatures as I've pulled them out and I'm suspecting that they're going to be monstrous alien creatures as I pull them out of that last one there but we've got some more in the in the ground over here as well anyway let's see what we can harvest eh now because we've had some real prolific abundance this year with the beans um, both the cobra beans the cobra beans that we got from Kelly Bramall at Kelly's Kitchen Garden, and also the elf beans, um, which we got from Joe. These French climbing beans, especially Joe's, he's been growing. <coughs> he's been growing those beans on this um, on this site for sort of like twelve years, and they do really, really well down on this site. So he saves the seeds, and that's what we're doing here, saving the seeds. So I've just hung these ones up to dry. The rest of them that weren't doubles like that I placed them on top and when they've gone over I say they've gone over like this they're getting all browned off and a bit fat and big they've got the beans inside them and hopefully we'll be able to get a quite a few beans I started it a few weeks ago actually this and um, there's peas in there and when you hear the rattle those are the peas that are relatively dry inside and they'll keep drying here ready for next year ready to start them off for next year that's the whole idea but I'll just show you the the, uh, the beans that we've just harvested there's a couple of pounds of them and there they are I mean I take them from about that size which is about four inches four and a half inches up until they're about that size 
and as they get too old and fat these are just on the cusp really they'll start to get stringy and not so nice but there's a lot of them that are, that are, that are pig between four and six inches really and for me that's the optimum sort, optimum sort of size that we want to be picking our french beans but yeah those are the harvested ones and the ones that we're going to be keeping for seeds you you, you You've just seen those on the top there. So 40 or 50 plants potentially could be started from those seeds. As the season progresses, as the year progresses, um, we're going to be harvesting even more for seeds. Um, they've got about another six or seven weeks to go, really, then. They'll, they'll be well into November, I'm guessing, uh, by the time they die out, if we don't get a harsh frost before that. But we're not expecting one until sort of early to mid-November. So they should be okay. We should be getting beans off. We should be getting about a pound of beans at least each week from the plants that we've got in there. There's about a total of 16 plants. Probably be getting more. Probably be getting that. About two pounds a week every time we come down for the next six or seven weeks. Right. On with the next bit. Let's see what, uh, what we've got in the way of courgettes. So yeah, four good sized courgettes there, turning into uh, marrow like creatures. The courgette is obviously in the marrow family, but it isn't a marrow. Although that one looks like a, suspiciously like a marrow. And uh, the slugs like him. The slugs have been having a go, but they've not managed to get through as yet on these. On this one. The other three are perfectly clean. And I'm in my own little shadow again there. Um, and the, the, there are the beans. Now let's crack on. We'll get the, we'll get the old um, beetroots out. We've got plenty to harvest there. Now as you can see in our top potato bed, our super duper main crop potato bed, are three, uh, uh, not three quarters, two thirds planted it with the beets and the chard and the coming through. So in the next month or so we'll be pulling stuff out of here I'm guessing. However, as previously mentioned, We've got tons of beetroot already, ready for pulling up in these beds. There's my shadow. So uh, I'm going to take that out and see what we've got. I suspect there'll be a lot of pickling going on. A couple of dogs having an argument there. A lot of pickling going on, I'm thinking. Now on these beets, although a lot of them are bug bit and, uh, and slug bit, there's quite a lot of healthy leaves as well. So I've been pulling some of those leaves out. So before I unearth them, we're going to get a double, a double crop off these. We're going to get the leaf and we're also going to get the root. So you pick out the nicer leaves. In they go to there. They can be added into um, sort of stew ups at the end, stir fries, that kind of thing, even curries and what have you. Or you can juice them. It doesn't matter if the bug bit really if you're juicing them. It doesn't matter if the bug bit really anywhere. You can take them, take the nice healthy ones, juice them up, cook them up, stir fry them, add them in at the end of a boil. And uh, it has that extra bit of nutrition, a lot of beta carotene in the, in the leaf, and it's, there's also uh, vitamin A and C. Uh, they are a healthy, healthy uh, crop, really, beetroots. You can't go wrong with beetroots. Very good for your liver, very good for your blood. So beetroots are fantastic. Vitamin B9, manganese, potassium, iron, uh, folate, vitamin C. You name it really, they're really, really good for your liver, good for your, um, they assist in blood flow and reducing blood pressure. Um, athletes drink be uh, beet juice, uh, it, it kickstarts your sort of performance really, it, uh, dilates your blood vessels, increases the red blood vessel, the red blood cells that are pumping that oxygen. It helps to oxygenate your body basically and keeps you fit and healthy. And cleans out your system. Good for your lymphatic system. It's been led to, um, or it's been seen to be good for certain cancers of, of your organs, organ cancers, especially sort of like bowel cancer and urinary tract cancers. 
Um, really fantastic stuff, full of antioxidants, beta carotene. It's a wonderful vegetable for beet, the leaf and the beetroot. In the same way that the brassica family is, um, the calabrese, uh, the brassicas. Yeah, it's good. Get on it. I'm going to do. I want to buy a juicer. The next thing I'm going to get is a juicer. As soon as I find, get my card through, my new cash card through, I'm going to get myself a decent juicer. See you in a bit. Now, because these beetroots have been cluster planted together, like that, they were, uh, say, three, four, even five sometimes, um, beet seeds to each cell when we started them off. And so they grow together like that. Which means you don't tend to get really big um, beetroots, but you do tend to uh, get a good utilisation of your growing space. And so you get, but you get variations. You get them from a, sort of that size, these weedy, weedy little things that never really stood a chance, to uh, to that size, which is sort of in between a sort of cricket ball and a golf ball size on the bees. And that's after like 12 to 14 weeks. They all come through like that and they're ready for harvesting now as you can see so we've almost filled up a bucket full of them there with the leaf what we haven't saved for eating the leaf that's not too clever and it's looking a bit manky that's all going into the compost waste not want not obviously but you always leave about two or three inches of the stem and you leave the root on at this stage to take home with you. You don't sort of clean them up on site. You leave them like that, and that way they'll sort of um, last better. When you boil them up, they'll uh, lose less of the redness inside, the beta carotene and the, the good red antioxidant that is inside the beet. And you can retain as much of the minerals and vitamins as you can that way. But that's what they look like when they come out. As I say, if they're cluster planted, you get... Uh, you get that sort of size beet which are ideal really i think that's the best size that you don't want them much bigger than that i don't think these are solendra well, there's a mixture of solendra and bolt hardy in the mix that's a bolt hardy one they're more of a globe shape and the cylindra and more of a cylindrical shape as you can see there so i'll crack on and then we'll get them all out I should imagine I'll be filling about a bucket and a half of these, which will come to about 25, 30 pound of beetroot in weight. Or uh, around about 10 to 12 kilograms. So yeah, let's crack on with that. As I say, once we take the stems off, I break the stems up further. I just um, sort of twist the, the, the stem, leave it about three inches, twist the stem, get the leaf off, uh, and then break the leaves up into the... Just give them a few more twists and breaks. And that's uh, that's better for breaking down in the compost heap. Oh yeah, just about make me out there, can't you? Um. So as I was saying, here's your beetroot. Bit of soil on the end of it. It's been teased out from its mates. Stripped the soil off. Took it onto your bed. Note there that. Uh, Critter has been having a go at that, it's probably a slug. Leave it about three, two or three inches of stem, like that. That goes into our keep bucket, and the stems are broken up and chucked in there. And you just carry on like that until you've got through your crop. Dead easy. No uh, rocket science or anything like that involved. A no-brainer, as they say. I don't know about you guys, but I think this lockdown and this whole sort of like time on your hands business, but nowhere to go, is leading to a, a growth in this. Certainly is for me. My belly's getting look at that one. My belly's getting beyond a joke. So uh, what I've decided to do is get back uh, get back in shape. Now to do that, 
as Jack LaLanne says, the great Jack LaLanne, the fitness guru from the 1950s and 60s, 70s, etc. He lived till he was about he lived till he was about 90 odd. Jack LaLanne. He was a fitness and health guru. He used to do all these feats of of strength and endurance and all of that sort of stuff before it was really fashionable. Uh, Jack LaLanne says that um, exercise is king and nutrition is queen. And if you get those both right, then you end up with a beautiful kingdom. Being your body and your physique, etc. Now, I've not been training me for ages and ages. Probably about, last time I went training was probably about 15 years ago. Probably about 20 years ago in, in, in actual earnest. But I've decided I'm knocking on for 50 now. And I'm out of shape. I've got a proper dad bod. Which is fine, I suppose, but I don't like it. So I'm going to be doing a series of experimentation and vlogs charting my progress from a fatty of knocking on for 16 stone as I am now to um, a lithe and fit and virile young man. My target is to get to 13 stone 6 and not to be fat. How's that? Nothing against fat people at all, but I just think at this stage in my life, I need to either get a grip of it or it could be, especially being diabetic, it could potentially lead, potentially lead to problems down the line. I've had a couple of health issues of late, as you probably know. Uh, so what I want to do is try and counter that flip it around, get rid of the moves, get rid of the belly, build up the arms, the, the whole the whole physique, and see if it's achievable. Be a standard sort of five foot ten average size, Joe Blogs, and I'll chart that, and all the different things that I'm trying, I'll show that. Now I'm thinking I'm going to do a couple of them on this little farmer's farm channel, but I'm going to create a new channel um, called Fat to Fit. Fat to Fit with Guru M. And, uh, and that way it'll encourage me to actually do it, because if I don't, there's always a chance of falling off the bandwagon. But if I'm actually charting it and showing you guys the progress on it, healthy eating, healthy diets, um, herbal and natural alternatives to uh, medical remedies and that kind of thing, and also the exercises and the training that I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm certainly hoping I'm going to get benefit from it, and, and hopefully you'll get benefit from it as well. If you fancy having a go yourself, you can do it along with me. Me and Rob from Ession's Family Garden uh, attempted it a couple of years ago, but we both fell by the wayside with it, really. But I think if it was being charted and logged and actually people were joining in and, 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 and sort of we can encourage each other through it, I think it's probably the best way for me actually to do it as part of a team. The Fat to Fit with Guru M team. So anyway, there you go. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. Uh, as I say, it's probably going to be a separate channel, but there'll be the odd sort of catch up on the Little Farmer's Farm channel as well. And, uh, and, and, uh, and there we are. I'm digressing anyway. I'll see you later on. See you in a bit. Yeah, these are 15 litre buckets. There's a bucket and a half of beets there. From these two beds. That one I'm going to leave it just to carry on. I'm going to clear out the weeds. But yeah, I reckon there's about uh, 15 jars of beetroot there. Plus a boil up to be salted and eaten today. Warm and salty. A bit of salty butter on them. Lovely. I'll just have the leaves in. <laughs> there have been uh, six buckets of leaves that are going to be added in now to the compost corral up at the top. Exhibit A. You can see that it's uh, added quite a bit of vegetable matter in to the old compost corral. Which is all good, baby. As I was uh, separating the beets from the leaves, came across these guys. They want to do a bit of sunbathing, I think, up on the tiki hut. 
up on there. There's a big one as well here, big black one. He can go for a sunbathe as well. Be free, get a tan. Corno de Toro Rosso. Sweet chili peppers. Well, not chili peppers, just sweet peppers, aren't they? They need to get a bit more Rosso for me, them, though. But the Apache, actual chili pepper at the side, has been doing uh, fab. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to get a few uh, few snippets of those I think today with the old uh, secateurs. Now, as you can see there, there are quite a few fruits um, that I've left to grow on and ripen further. Um, but yeah, there's a good what forty, probably fifty. Apache chilies that have been harvested. There's a few still left on the red ones, but they're quite small. I'm going to leave them um, to ripen up because nothing's attacking them, as I can see at the moment. So they should be fine for another couple of weeks, and by that time, then we should uh, we should get the rest of them off. And hopefully, the corn or the toro rosso will have come to something. I've noticed that they're being chewed. Look at that there. A couple of them like that. Something's been chewing at the sort of where the uh, stem meets the pepper. Something's having a go. I wonder if it's a three slug or something. I tell you what, slugs are a pain in the backside. They're the horrible beasts. Slugs. So we're going to be doing lots and lots of different uh, methods, I think, to control the slugs this next time including soil nematodes. Nematodes are going to be definitely going into the greenhouses and the, the polytunnels. And a few of the beds as well, especially the, especially the brassica beds. I've just noticed on my leeks we're getting some scapes, which are the uh, flowering stems coming up. I've just pulled two off there. Now these are edible. You don't want them to go to flower because it ruins the, uh, it ruins the leek. So, I'm pulling them off. Breaking them out. Now that might not save the leak, particularly. But you can eat the scapes. <coughs> Alien probes. That one. Pull that up your bum, do you? I'll set them. This is our autumn winter veg bed, or one of them at the top. Um, that's amaranth, so with the amaranth, I'm just going to pick a few leaves from the amaranth, which I have been doing there. So we've got the uh, the beet leaf, get some more beet leaf, I think, if there's any decent ones in here. Might have a healthy stir for I that's chard. So I'll get a couple of bit leaves of chard, snip them from the outside. I'll take a few from each plant, probably two or three from each plant. This is a sort of leafy beast. Oriental mixed leaves, these. Look at that creature, look at that thing there. Woo! My God, look at that evil looking spider in the world there. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it. It's doing no harm. It's going to catch some bugs there. I'm not going to eat that, eat that leaf though, I don't think. There's all sorts of prehistoric beasties in here. I feel like David Attenborough most days when I come down. In the deepest, darkest Amazon. So you just pick a few leaves off each thing, get yourself a salad on the go. Or whatever you want. That's a nice sort of one. And that one. Don't know what it is. I'll have it though. 
just chucked them in these seeds. All different varieties. This, this was the flowering pack joy, this, this stuff. A lot of this um, has been devastated again by the slugs. The old enemy, the slug. Absolute pigs there. Swines. Right, that should do me for me for me dinner. So this is kind of a daily pick, really, this time of year when you've got an allotment plot. Probably more than that. Yeah, I mean I could have took much more than that, but we don't need it. You just take what you need as and when you need it, hoping that you don't leave too much on the vine or in the ground or on the leaf. Um so it goes over, you can pick it at the prime. I mean, these are a little bit bug bit, aren't they? A little bit uh, nibbled. But I don't mind, I'll eat them. If it's good enough for the slugs, it's good enough for me, isn't it? Eh? So we'll be getting some uh, stir frying going on with that, I think. Or maybe even a soup. A soup. A soup. I've got some potatoes uh, at our house, obviously. From the plot, from the magnificent garden. And, uh, yeah, I've got some onions as well, so I'll get the onions, I'll get them scapes in there, I'll get all the rest of it, get a green soup on the go, a healthy soup. Add in some of the chilli peppers, add in some of these. <coughs> Maybe even add in some of the courgette, you never know. I might go for it and get like a sort of ten crop soup. But yeah, I caught myself on uh, Magic Mix Channel. I was helping him do his um, tomato house over there. And put some sheeting on the top of it and a gutter. <laughs> and um, yeah, I saw my belly, mate. I was wondering why I needed needed a wok to iron my shirts, and uh, and that was the reason why the belly is is atrocious. I need to lose about thirty pounds, I think, in weight, at least thirty pounds, fifteen stone nine or something like that. I am fifteen stone nine ten. So if I lose thirty pounds. That'll get me to about 13 stone, 7, 8, which will do. I think that'll be all right. But I need to train as well. I need to turn this fat dad bod into a sleek, lithe fighting machine. Keep leaving that out. It's my tripod. Oh, I didn't set those, did I? I didn't, shoot, I didn't put them with the, with the rest of it. I'll put them with the rest of it and stick it up for two seconds at the end. Anyway, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This is Guru Mafinda signing out. And remember, we love you all. Love yourselves and each other. And um, keep growing with your head down. Catch you later, everyone. Bye-bye now. Have a good week. There you go. That's the real harvest. See you later, boys and girls. Take care. Ta-da.